In this lesson, we're going to talk about flatness of a surface. Now, there are two versions of flatness you can call out in GD&T, one being on a flat surface, and the other controlling the derived median plane of a flat object. Both have useful applications in the GD&T world, but in this video, we're only going to discuss surface flatness. For more information, be sure to check out our website, gdntbasics.com. Flatness is among the first four symbols on your GD&T chart, known as the form tolerances. These all share fairly similar properties. These include straightness, flatness, circularity, and cylindricity. Form tolerances are used to establish the overall shape of a feature or surface. These symbols never reference datums or other features. They're only held relative to themselves, and you're just controlling the shape of the feature. Form is automatically controlled by rule number one. So when you design a part, you should only use these form tolerance symbols as a refinement for function if you want to further specify something. Now let's go over flatness as it applies to a surface. Surface flatness can be found on your GD&T symbols chart at row number three. Flatness is never relative to a datum. And surface flatness cannot be used with the MMC or LMC modifier. However, we need to note that flatness can also be applied to a feature of size. And in this case, you can use MMC or LMC. We'll discuss more on this later. Flatness is exactly what it sounds like, how flat a surface on a feature is. It's the condition of being purely planar. It's a 3D tolerance zone. You're checking the amount of variation, up and down in the y-axis, over the entire flat 2D plane. Flatness is a very common symbol, but often misunderstood. We'll discuss the limitations of the symbol later in this video. Now, we mentioned that there's another form of flatness, otherwise known as flatness of a feature of size, or derived median plane flatness. This version of flatness can be found on your GD&T symbols chart at row number four. Flatness is still not relative to a datum. However, when you apply it to a feature of size, you now can use the MMC or LMC modifier. This is flatness applied to a feature of size. You can notice that the flatness callout is now pointing to the size dimension. For flatness, it's important that the correct feature control frame placement is used to determine whether it's called on the surface or on a feature of size. We will discuss flatness as it applies to a feature of size in another video, as well as discuss how to use the max material condition modifier with it. Just like straightness, whether you're calling flatness on a feature of size or a surface depends on your feature control frame placement. When you place it on the surface itself, you are controlling the surface. This means that you have a leader arrow pointing directly to the surface or an extension line coming off of it. For a feature of size, your control frame is either pointing to the actual dimension arrows or you're placing it with the specific size dimension of the feature of size that you're controlling. Now, these five symbols can control a surface or feature of size, so you need to pay extra attention when you see these called out on a drawing. Flatness, straightness, parallelism, perpendicularity, and angularity all have different controls based on whether it's being called on a surface or a feature of size. Okay, let's talk about how you call out flatness on a drawing. In this way, just like we discussed before, the feature control frame is pointing directly to the surface that you want to apply flatness to. You can either do this with a leader arrow or an extension line. This means that the entire top surface of the part is referenced by flatness. The arrow or frame could actually point to the top of either view in the picture to the left. Let's discuss the tolerance zone of flatness. If the drawing calls out 30 microns of flatness, what does that actually mean? 
Well, this means that you have to have your entire surface within two parallel planes that are spaced at the tolerance width apart. The feature here, which is the top surface of the box that's in red, is in tolerance as long as it entirely lies within these two parallel planes. In the 2D cross section, you can see that the surface can vary, but only up to this 0.3 tolerance zone. And it's also important to note that this tolerance zone is not oriented in any way. As long as the surface fits between two parallel planes at any angle or location, flatness is met. Let's discuss how you'd actually measure for flatness. So the surface must lie between two parallel planes. How do you determine if this is actually met? Well, one of the most common ways to measure flatness is with a CMM. This way you can take readings on the entire surface and determine if it has met the tolerance. A coordinate measuring machine is able to map out the true tolerance zone plane without constraining the measurement to any datum. Remember, the tolerance zone can be oriented in any way, as long as it's between two parallel planes. Now, there is an alternate way to measure flatness without using a CMM. The measurer needs to make sure that the part surface is made perfectly parallel first, if you are going to measure without a CMM. The part can first be placed on three level support points that are set up to form a virtual plane. Then you can measure from underneath to determine the flatness with a feeler or height gauge. Now watch out, there is no datum involved, so you are only determining how flat the surface is to itself, not to the bottom of the part. This also is a fairly less accurate way to measure flatness because these three support points might be placed at high points or low points on your surface and you might be getting a completely different reading. CMM is always the best measurement for flatness because it can map out the surface and is more accurate. Let's talk about where flatness is used. Flatness can be applied whenever the form of a piece is critical, regardless of the size dimension, thickness, or other features on the part. For example, if you're using a fixture, you probably don't care how thick it is. You want to make sure that the part is flush and doesn't wobble when you put it on. So refining the surface form will help guarantee that you have a solid connection without constraining any of the other details on the part, especially if you're just setting the part on top of it. One of flatness's most important uses, though, is as a form refinement on a datum surface, beyond what is normally controlled with the size dimension alone through rule number one. You can see flatness applied to datum A right here. It's a very common practice in design to place a flatness callout on a planar datum. This way you refine the form of a critical mating surface or functional surface. It'll also help you create a stable datum feature for accurate, repeatable measurement on any of the other features that you have. Remember though, any GD&T refinement should only be used when functionally required. Form is controlled automatically through rule number one, so you may already have enough form control to function properly. When flatness is called on a drawing, it also controls straightness. Flatness is really just the 3D version of straightness. While straightness is the height variance over a line, flatness is the height variance over a planar surface. If you were calling out point one of straightness, you would only be controlling it across the one dimensional line. You would not be controlling the height variance going back down the part. With flatness though, you're controlling both the width and the length of the part. You can see that if you have a flatness control of 0.1, you would also be controlling the straightness in both directions. Flatness does not automatically control any other GD&T symbols, only straightness. There are several other geometric callouts and symbols that control flatness automatically. 
Parallelism, perpendicularity, and angularity when applied to a surface are all similar to flatness in the sense that they form a tolerant zone between two planes that the entire surface must lie within. These are known as the orientation symbols, and we'll be discussing them individually in future videos. Flatness is automatically controlled by orientation on a flat surface. For instance, if parallelism is called for 0 0.2, your flatness is also controlled to 0.2 for free. It's automatically done. Flatness is also a specific form of profile of a surface. When profile is called out on a planar surface, flatness is automatically controlled to the same tolerance. We'll discuss profile further in a future video. As we've mentioned many times before, size dimensions control all of the form symbols thanks to rule number one. Form callouts are only a refinement and are only to be used when functionally necessary. Let's go over a few key concepts about flatness. Remember, rule number one still applies when flatness is used. This means that if a part is at its MMC for its size dimension, meaning the largest external size or smallest internal size, flatness needs to be perfect. The flatness tolerance can never allow a part to exceed its maximum part boundary. Let's give a quick example of this. Suppose you have a block with a height of 10 plus or minus 0.5 and a flatness callout of 0.1 on the top surface of the box. Everything is normal when you are not near the maximum size dimension. So if your size measures 10.25, your flatness can go up to the full amount with no problems. You can never go over the size dimensions of the part due to rule number one, unless you are using independency or you're using flatness of a feature of size. In this case, we're only talking about flatness applied to a surface though. If your part was 10.5 millimeters in height, as you measure it at, say at the end of the box, your flatness would need to be near perfect and could not let your part fall outside of the specification. You can have some waviness in it. However, you can't have any of these high points shown here that make your box go over the maximum size dimension. They could be dips, but you can't have any mountains over the 10.5. One common mistake when applying flatness is confusing it with parallelism. Flatness and parallelism are not the same thing. Remember, flatness is the condition of all points on a surface being in the same plane. Parallelism is the condition where all points on a surface lie equidistant or are considered parallel to a datum plane. The orientation of your tolerance zone now matters. To put this simply, this table is flat but not parallel and would probably not make a very good table. The surface is flat, but not parallel to the floor, which in this case would be considered the datum. Just remember, parallelism is not equal to flatness. Let's go over a quick example of flatness to show how it is beneficial over just using a simple coordinate system. Say you were making a fixture that was simply designed to hold a part flat while it was being drilled into. The only requirement of this fixture is that the top surface is flat to 0.2 so that when you're drilling into the part it doesn't wobble. Without using the flatness symbol, the only way to hold the table to the flat dimension that you require is to hold your thickness tolerance to plus or minus 0.1. This will make sure that the surface stays within the 0.2 boundary. Keeping a fixture plate to a dimension of plus or minus 0.1 may be expensive and unnecessary since you really don't care how thick the plate is, you just want to make sure that the top surface is flat. How could you redesign this part so that the surface remains flat while allowing you to open up your thickness tolerance? Well, if you've been paying attention during this presentation, you know that using a simple flatness callout ensures that you are only specifying what you need on the drawing. This is where GD&T can save time and money.
you're only controlling what the design functionally requires. You can see adding the 0.2 flatness to the top surface still keeps your 0.2 boundary. However, your thickness tolerance can now be open to whatever is necessary for it. Keep in mind though, you're not orienting this plane in any way. You're only making sure that it's flat. So let's review what we learned about surface flatness. Surface flatness is a 3D tolerance zone that only controls the form of a feature, not size, location, or orientation. No datums are ever used in the flatness feature control frame. The entire surface must lie between two parallel planes that are not held to any orientation or location. Flatness can be gauged only if the surface is held perfectly parallel to the measurement device. However, it's usually surface mapped with a CMM for increased accuracy. Flatness is mainly used when a datum surface refinement is required. You're trying to give a nice flat surface for your datum. Flatness allows you to control a surface without modifying or tightening any size tolerances. Rule number one still applies to the size of the part. This also means the flatness tolerance must be less than the size dimension tolerance. This only applies for surface flatness. Flatness controls straightness of a planar surface and is automatically controlled by orientation symbols, profile of a surface, and any size dimension applied to a planar feature due to rule number one. And last, remember, flatness is not the same as parallelism. And just think of our table example. Well, that sums up surface flatness. In another video, we're going to be discussing flatness on a feature of size.